We'll call the regular commission meeting, Upshur County Commission meeting, to order. We'll begin with a moment of silent meditation and prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Amen. <laughs> then we do better on the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have the minutes of October 25th, 2012, Upshur County Commission meeting. And Jackie is going to read those for us. County Commission of Upshur County, West Virginia held their regular meeting at the Courthouse Annex on Thursday, October 25, 2012 at 9 a.m. Donnie Tanney called the meeting to order. There were present Donnie Tanney Commissioner, Creed Pletcher Commissioner, J.C. Ravity Commissioner, William Parker County Administrator, Megan Pomery Assistant County Administrator, and Jacqueline Dinklocker Secretary. The meeting began with a moment of silent meditation and prayer followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. All motions passed unanimously unless otherwise stated. After reading of the minutes on motion by J.C. Rafferty, second by Creed Pletcher, the Commission approved the regular meeting minutes of October 18, 2012 as submitted. Joyce Harris Thacker, Upshur County Family Resource Network Director, appeared before the Commission and presented a request that the Commission provide payroll services for a temporary part-time substance abuse prevention grant part-time employee. Ms. Harris Thacker provided an update slash status report on activities and services that the grant provides and the duties of the proposed employee. After discussion on motion by Creed Pletcher, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the commission approved Ms. Harris Thacker's request. Patty Adams, Pancreatic Cancer Action Network representative, presented the Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month po proclamation. The purpose of the proclamation is to bring increased awareness of the incidence of pancreatic cancer as the fourth leading cause of cancer deaths in America with the goal of increased funding for research, patient services, and public awareness and education related to developing effective treatments and a cure for pancreatic cancer. After discussion on motion by J.C. Ravity, seconded by Creed Pletcher, the commission approved and authorized the commission to sign the proclamation. William Parker provided a review of the West Virginia Records Management and Preservation Board grant guidelines and application for fiscal year 2013-14. The grant application in the amount of $14,438 is for the benefit of the Office of the Upshur County Circuit Clerk for the purchase of a heavy-duty cross-cut shredder and for the continuation of scanning and indexing of chancery and law case files phase two for the conversion of di digital to digital files. After discussion on motion by J.C. Rafferty, second by Creed Pletcher, the commission approved and authorized the president to sign the grant application and related documents. Agenda item number two, the approval of Upshur County financial statement for fiscal year ended June 2012 was not ready for action at this time and will be placed on a future agenda. After discussion on motion by Creed Pletcher, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the commission approved the employment of temporary part-time early voting clerks, Beatrice Adams, Irene Andrew, Nelda Light, Tana Wentz, Judith Miles, Catherine Fry, Beulah Riffle, Margaret Neely, Philip Murphy, Betty Hevener, James Vance, Catherine Vance, and Janet K. Wilson. Effective date of employment is October 24, 2012 through November 3, 2012 at the rate of $7.25 per hour. After discussion on motion by J.C. Ravity, seconded by Creed Pletcher, the commission approved and authorized the president to sign the authorization of ACH withdraws for retirement and other contributions for public employees retirement system and deputy sheriff retirement fund. After discussion on motion by Creed Pletcher, second by J.C. Rafferty, the commission approved and authorized the president to sign the grant contract and related documents with the West Virginia Development Authority for the governor's community participation grant in the amount of $4,000 
for the benefit of the Warren District Volunteer Fire Department. After discussion on motion by J.C. Rafferty, second by Creed Pletcher, the commission approved the resignation of Jamie Queen as worthless check clerk um, for the magistrate clerk office, effective October 18, 2012. Action on the employment of the animal control was deferred to later in this meeting. After discussion on motion by Creed Pletcher, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the commission approved a two-year moratorium for changes to the current road and or street names effective October 25, 2012 through January 1, 2015. The moratorium will reduce confusion for emergency and postal services in facilitating the Im implementation of changes to the addressing and mapping system, which have recently taken place or will be going into effect within the next few months. William Parker provided an update on projects at the James Curry Library and Park. Rick Edwards appeared before the commission and provided an update slash status report on the Upshur County Wellness Complex. Mr. Edwards reported that the fields and roads are in good condition and the fields are being utilized. Mr. Edwards discussed the plans for the current armory building after completion of the new building. The commission discussed the West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals decision concerning the contested election petition and response, David D. Taylor petitioner v. Michael R. Kelly respondent, which upheld the county commission and the circuit court of appeals decision. The commission discussed board appointments needed or upcoming and will follow up at a future meeting. Judy Fado. Upshur County resident appeared before the commission and expressed concerns regarding the possibility of flooding issues on her property in the future due to the construction of the armory. Ms. Fado's property is located next to the wellness complex and the future site of the new armory building. The commission advised Ms. Fado to check with the Army Corps of Engineers to address any questions she may have. On motion by J.C. Rafferty, seconded by Creed Pletcher, the Commission entered into executive session at 10, 10 a.m. to review and discuss applications and recommendations for the employment of an animal control officer. Present were Donnie Tanny, Creed Pletcher, J.C. Rafferty, William Parker, Megan J. Pomeroy. No decisions were made in executive session. The Commission returned to open session at 10, 25 a.m. After discussion on motion by Creed Pletcher, seconded by J.C. Rafferty, the Commission approved the employment of Patty Jo Gum as full-time animal control officer as recommended by Greg Harris, Director of Facility Operations. Effective date of employment is November 13, 2012, at the rate of $9 per hour. The Commission reviewed the following for your information items. Number one, agendas and or notices of meetings as listed. Number two, meeting minutes and or financial reports as listed. Number three, meetings as listed. Number four, appointments needed or upcoming as listed. The Commission approved all invoices for payment. The Commission approved all vacation orders. The Commission approved the following settlements as listed. The Commission approved the following exonerations and or refunds as listed. The Commission approved the following request to attend meetings for Commission employees as listed. The Commission reviewed property books for consideration in the establishment of Upshur County Appraisal Assessment Advisory Board. The Commission postponed the 2 o'clock <coughs> meeting with James Bryson Van Nostrand, Van Nostrand's architect concerning cost allocation for the E911 project and will re be rescheduling a future meeting. The commission recessed at 11.30 a.m. With no further business, a motion by J.C. Rafferty, seconded by Creed Pletcher, the commission meeting adjourned at 11.30 a.m. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes as read? Not on ask for a motion to be approved as such. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, our next scheduled appointment is 1030 with Joe Leighton or Leighton, Red Clay Development of West Virginia LLC, Upshur Townhouses LP Housing Project. And the next one is at 1 o'clock, our policy board, 2 o'clock, our de departmental supervisor meeting, and 3.30 at with uh, Bryce and Van Ostrand. So we will go down through our other items, and the first is to approve Upshur County financial statement for fiscal year ending June 2012. 
Uh, the office of the, the county clerk has uh, prepared those. They had uh, those uh, prepared last week uh, later uh, during the meeting. Uh, the uh, state auditor's office is actually the one that compiled the information. Uh, we contracted them to put that together. Uh, there's numerous copies. If the commission would like to look through those before they uh, sign them today, later on today, then you could take time later this morning to do that. Well, it looks like we'll have time here between appointments, so <coughs> we will do that. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Next item is provide payroll and related services for the Upshur County Family Resource Network <coughs> as requested for the employment of Amanda Hayes as part-time grant coordinator, substance abuse prevention services, funding provided by West Virginia Department of Health and Human Resources for behavioral health and health facilities, effective November the 11th, November, I guess that would be 11, 8, 12 at the rate of $10 an hour. So do we have a motion that we approve this? Would this be a pass-through payroll? I'd like some discussion on at least to have an explanation as to the background and, and the, okay. how the county uh, is associated or what our authority is or is not in connection with the appointment. The uh, Family Resource Network, uh, Ms. Harris Thacker, uh, appeared a couple of meetings ago and went over the uh, uh, grant of uh, that they are receiving. They're administering. Uh, receiving the grant, it's being administered by uh, I think the Harrison County Family Resource Network for a number of uh, of counties uh, of other family resource networks in other counties. The commission is really not involved in the grant at all. Uh, the only involvement we have is providing services, a payroll conduit to the Family Resource Network because uh, they were not set up to do payroll. Similar to the situation, we handle the payroll for Ms. Harris Thacker on behalf of the Family Resource Network also. We really have no control, management, authority, or say anything in the operations of the Family Resource Network. It's a reimbursable situation, and that <coughs> position, as well as this position, will be reimbursed. Uh, also, the Family Resource Network will receive the grant funds and reimburse the county commission. Uh, for any expenditures that we may have. Similar to the emergency squad? Similar to the emergency squad. We have other agencies that we provide this services for. Uh, the emergency squad, we only have one position. A, a number of years ago, that was the only paid position, and uh, it was set up to go through the county commission uh, for that reason. Now they have other paid staff, but it, that hasn't been moved uh, uh, for the emergency medical services over to them because of the long time employee and benefits retirement and things that are associated with that so uh, similar to what we also had with the development authority development uh, authority this year to yes. this fiscal year uh, and we still have one employee right. or one employee of the development authority that we're doing that for similar to the airport authority right. until july then they moved to handling their own payroll they employed the services of a, a bookkeeper accountant <clears throat> Uh, so they're doing that now. So we've done that. We've done this for other agencies and situations numerous times. The only reason I raised the issue is because uh, of Amanda's position with uh, a local newspaper, and she reports on county news. And uh, I, I didn't know, uh, you know, what, you know, if that created a conflict of interest. Quite frankly, I just wanted to make sure that uh, that was not the case. Yeah, there's uh, no issues as it would relate to the county commission and, and, and the situation you know, we have. It's just a service we're providing to the Family Resource Network. Well, and I think anyone that, that knows how much Amanda donates her time to causes like that, that uh, I think she's, uh, she's very aware of what's going on and, and has, like I say, um, volunteered a lot of time for a lot of those different type projects. I think she's a good fit for that position. And, um, well, I would, I, and I agree fully because I attend the same church Amanda does and she's very active in a number of activities, civic and otherwise. But I want to ensure that, that uh, 
the public is aware or that this is something that will not impact on her reporting in the commission and that uh, she will be objective in her reporting and whatnot of any activity that she covers that occurs here in the commission. This is, I know that she will. This is short term and limited in scope because Correct. it's a short term grant. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the ending period is. I think through the end of this fiscal year right. time period. So we're looking at very few months in duration and very limited funding. Right. <laughs> Any other questions? No. I'll call for a motion. So moved. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same time. Motion carried. All right. Next item is review state of emergency declaration. Consider date for cancellation. We have a uh, a recommendation from our OEM office as to how much longer we need to continue in the state of emergency. I was not able to contact them. I prepared the agenda Monday due to the holiday, and uh, Mr. Ferry has been out uh, due to a personal situation with okay. his family. So uh, I don't know if this is something you want to consider later on today, discuss, or see if Mr. Farrell's available later today to ask. Uh, as you gentlemen are aware, the original uh, declaration at the county level was just for a 48-hour period. Uh, that was renewed on the 31st and was uh, declared until canceled by the county commission. So that's the situation we're in right now. The governor's special or the enactment is still in effect? Yes, as far as I know, that is still in effect. Well, we still have a lot of people without power in Upshur County. I think we should probably keep that in effect until at least the people get their power back. I believe we're still delivering meals to a certain portion, and that the uh, Baptist Church on Wayside Baptist Church is still providing, and so is Chapel Hill. So in, uh, I would concur with Creed that till we get a better handle on things we hold this in abeyance well and as long as the state is <coughs> state of emergency i see no reason for us to change basically since well it has changed now the last two days upshire county had the, the highest power outage and i saw last night where one other county stepped ahead of us i'm sure which one it was now but we still have 3,500 to 4,000 people out of power and you know, one thing I think we need to do, through whether through the emergency, also emergency services or what, but um, we see several staging areas around. I know up, up at the old, where the old garden place was for the older folks, and what was that? Sh uh, Shop and Save? Right. The most recent, the big right. parking lot. There must have been 50 or 60 trucks there, and I think they were from Ohio. When I crossed the street just a little while ago, there were about six or eight trucks that went mm -hmm. on 20 North that were uh, from Texas. They had tree cutting services, I believe. Right. Power. Well, they were a power company. Uh, <clears throat> but someone uh, someone was telling me that they stopped up at Tennerton and they asked those folks where all they were working. And they said, well, they were there waiting instructions as where to go. So I don't know if, and I, and I know it's massive, and I, I know when you have that many folks coming into the area, uh, but you know if they're if they're setting up there for an extended period of time because they don't know where to go, I think maybe we need to talk to the to uh, First Energy Mon Power and see if there is a problem with coordination because because and I'm not complaining even though we had a, a gentleman out on. Uh, um, up on Bailey Ridge area that emailed, I think all of us, and expressed his concern about how long the power had been out and how long, uh, several issues. <coughs> you know, some of them are, anyone that lives in the in the county knows, you're not gonna get broadband. We don't have broadband in Tomlinsville. You know, our electric's been off since the beginning of the storm, and there's, there's no sign of it being back on for some time. Um, so, you know, I'm the same situation he is. He was talking about having satellite internet. Well, that's what I have to have in order to get any kind of speed. Um, you know, there are certain areas that are always the last ones to get the electric back on. And he was concerned about the, the timeliness of getting the roads plowed. Um, and I'm not sure if that's a county road or state highway or whether it's a private drive, but 
Uh, and <clears throat> some of those issues are just simply the fact of where we live. Um, you know, it's just like the, the folks that live up on Hemlock Ridge. They wanted water for a number of years and it's not economically feasible to get it when it's seventy-five or eighty thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars per customer and there's so much grant money available, <coughs> it's gonna to go to the, the, the projects that's twenty five thousand dollars. That's just a matter of math. I mean there's only so much money. <coughs> but I think if there are circumstances that we can we can do something to at least talk to the folks in charge. I think that's part of our responsibility as leaders of the county. If there's situations like that where we can inject some thought and ask some questions that maybe we'll get, um, you know, things faster. And, and, and I know with the same token, when you have that many different companies coming in, you're helping, that it takes a while to get everybody out in the field in the proper place to work. But I think they need to be made aware of that. And, and it, it certainly, you know, adds to the frustration of people when they see 40 or 50 trucks sitting in an area for an extended period of time and they're out of electricity. So I think we need to, whether it's through the Office of Emergency Management or the Commission, that we need to at least make contact and, and see if there are some issues there that, that can be resolved. There was also some miscommunication. Uh, someone said that they were staying at the 4-H camp in Sellerville. There's workers from Ohio, but they were actually staying at Jackson's Mill. And uh, one gentleman at the Dollar Store the other night said he, he hoped they could hurry up and restore the power because he'd like to go home. So, yeah, go ahead. Rick. You know, Bobby, I just add to that. Uh, I still dabble in the Red Cross. I did this ask for quite a while. They were staying in some of those trucks with the Nor'easter on the East Coast, so they weren't just for here. They had them on standby in case for Washington and all that that, that latest storm that went through and jumped 23 inches from what I hear towards New Jersey. Well, and those are some good, those, those are some uh, answers that we could get by asking those questions. And in that way, we can relay that information to the, to the folks in the area. <clears throat> I mean, there's certain value to living in the beautiful hills of West Virginia, but when the storms come through, there's certain consequences. <clears throat> I think many times, as we found during the uh, summer incident, the storm came through, it's, it is communication communicating between the various elements involved in, in restoring the power or government. It's just a matter of communication. But I think overall, uh, we've much improved from the summer's uh, activity with regard to uh, coordinating relief in, in many ways. So, but we will, and uh, I'll get back to that gentleman. Uh, I did send an email reply to him that I would inquire about that and get back to them, which I do later today. Okay. <clears throat> um, approval of community proclamation. That's something that uh, we will be uh, dealing with and talking about in executive session. It's not because it's any kind of a subversive thing to the community. It's just that there's someone that's going to be honored <clears throat> and they, they want to be, be able to announce it at a later date and have the proclamation in place. So. It's a good thing. Um, it's just something that they want to surprise the individual before all these years of service. Um, so that's that's what that's all about. And of course, review of the property tax books. That's something that stays on there until we get through all these other crises. <coughs> uh, that, then we have confirm action taken on Sunday, November the 4th in relocation of Precinct 4, which is Arlington Community Building, to go to Rock Cave Elementary School. Precinct 25, out in French Creek Elementary School, to go to the Armory. Precinct 27A, French Creek Elementary, to go to the Armory. And 27L, French Creek Elementary School, to go to the National Guard Armory. So we need to uh, take official action to confirm those decisions that's made in that situation. I'll make a motion. Okay. <coughs> second. I have a second. Any questions on that? All in favor say aye. aye. Those same side. Motion carried. It appears we made the right decision. <laughs> yeah, because they still don't have still don't have electric. I mean, there's no school there today. So. For once we made the right decision. Yeah. <laughs> well. <coughs> Although it can be controversial, I, 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 I took a vote, a, uh, an old uh, 
farmer's uh, saying, but you know, they say even a blind hog can find an apron every <laughs> once in a while. That's right. <laughs> and not that you made everybody happy in well, that <laughs> decision. Even though people, yeah, right. And, no and that's deed. understandable. I always like the one, no good deed gets no punished. Right. That's also applicable. Well, you know, you make decisions based on, uh, we looked at a lot of different options. Uh, you know, there was the option of bringing tents in, uh, but then there were a lot of issues of safety and, and room and uh, that type of thing. So, you know, we had the armory locked in, fortunately, beforehand, and in anticipation of that and others. Fortunately, all the others got their power on except Arlington, and so. Uh, and we had what was their what was their voter turnout? Fifty-six point oh seven, I do believe. Who, who won the uh, poll? <coughs> Megan. I did. Congratulations, <laughs> the first timer. Fifty or fifty-nine. Fifty-nine. Another, I believe that evokes yeah, another uh, another Excuse saying me. of uh, beginner's luck. Yes. <laughs> Uh, two years ago, I made the right choice. Well, I see beginner's luck. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, buddy, I guess you're next. Um, <clears throat> and what was our, did we get a percentage of early voting? What was that? Was that like 20? Like 25%. Yeah, 3,172. It was like a 25% percent almost a quarter, I think. 14,100. Yeah. So about half voters. voted early. 25%. Well, no, percent. what was it? <laughs> The turnout. 59.07. Okay, and what was the total number of, of voters? 14,000. What's interesting, and I don't know if I don't know if they if they have a method of determining. About 8,300. Was it? About 8,300. 8,300. In round numbers. Okay, so what percentage voted early? <coughs> Almost 40%, 35%. About 38%. 38% voted early. Of the voters. Of but the here's voters. the interesting thing, and I don't know if anyone's done a study done a study on that since early voting has been enacted. The purpose of early voting is to get more people to vote. And the question is, <clears throat> does it get more people to vote, or does it get those who would vote anyway just to come early? Is it, or if anyone's done a study on that or made a determination of if it's effective in getting more people to vote or does it just get people give them the convenience to, to vote conveniently I suspect that somewhere in this great land there's a political science professor who's applied for a grant to study <laughs> yeah. that yeah. to find out the, the bean counters yeah. are in the back room somewhere yes, we running have, the numbers yeah, we have somebody you know, on track. I think early voting is the way to go I think yeah, we should uh, do early <laughs> voting and not have an election to save us a lot of money I think we should do like Oregon. It should be mail-in ballot for everyone. They had the highest 60 some percent uh, turnout. So anyway, okay, moving right along. <clears throat> That's the items we have on our agenda. Uh, we have some information on our building permits. Um, we've got between seven and eight hundred thousand dollars in building permits for. Uh, Seven hundred twenty-four thousand. I wonder if that will increase as a result of a storm. I, mean, I just wonder know. if some of these yeah. are. Um, yeah, I would say we'll probably have some uh, some new metal buildings <laughs> built and some roofs repaired. Okay, that seems to be what we have. Do you gentlemen have anything else, Willie? Well, we have some paperwork and the proclamation to review in the executive session. How are, we doing, how are we doing on our appointments? Um, well, did we have time to go over those this week and determine what we have and if we people want to continue to serve? Or <coughs> Still have a month to go before they're vacant in many other cases. Do we have any that's vacant now other than the, there's a curry, I believe, but since they're not going to meet the February, that's not really that critical. Parks and Recreation Board, there's a vacancy to the June of 2013, and then there's two appointments, Mr. Faley and Ms. Reed at the county make that expired on June 30th. Of 12? Yes. Yeah. The Board of Education, I, I, we tried to make contact. I don't know uh, if Alicia, I know, has contacted them, and I don't know what that situation is there. Are those two uh, board appointments? 
or Mr. Mr. Failey and Ms. Reed are county appointments. County. And then uh, an individual appointee relative to a vacancy on the Convention of Visitors Bureau. Yes. Which I think he's also spoken with you, Willie. Really, yes. Regarding that. So I, we can move on that one at some convenient time in the near future. my knowledge, I'm still trying to verify what the sole conservation district uh, on their appointment to the Solid Waste Authority. Many of these, I think, uh, on the planning, uh, Region 7 <coughs> Planning and Development Council, I, sign, I suspect will accept a continuation of their initial appointment. They usually do. Yeah, <laughs> they're very interested in the community yeah. and development. Based of the chairman. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> well, we'll continue to work on those, and uh, um, we'll talk. I know, uh, I think Lisa's out sick, uh, but we'll she, continue she to today. pursue that and, and uh, try to get that uh, at least before Creed leaves. I know that's a goal, yes. It'd make me a little bit happier. Yeah, that's right. I would like to consider that when you do leave, you might want to consider still serving on the board in some capacity on various uh, boards that you're on because. Uh, Contributed to the community at that point. Yeah. I'm not going to quit. <laughs> Salvation just, Army is glad to see me. I'll have more time. Right. Literacy volunteers. Okay, well, let's. Uh, do we have a motion to enter into executive session per West Virginia Code 698 4 for discussion of proclamation? So moved. I'll second. Both of the aye. Aye. Both same time. Motion. Okay, we are exiting executive session and entering regular session, and there was action taken as per West Virginia Code 69A-4 under this particular exemption, exception. So, and that decision will be made known publicly at a later date. Okay, so that takes care of until 1030, which is about 25 minutes and we will start on our paperwork between now and then.